Hi everybody, one of the things arrays bring to the table are really easy ways for us to manipulate the data stored inside of them. And there are three methods that really help with this, and they're map, filter, and reduce. And guess what? This video is going to be all about them, so let's get started. Let's start with map. So the way map works is this. Let's say you have an array and it has a bunch of items in it. What map allows you to do is take those exact same items, but transform them and modify them and put them into a new array. So here's an example where I have an array of just letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And by using map, I can transform them into, let's say, a new array whose contents are basically numbers. Now, not the greatest of all examples, but it's giving an idea that the original contents and each individual item in our contents can be modified into something completely new. Now to draw that part home, let's go ahead and look at an example. And so the best way to make sense of all this is to build something where I'm going to have some names. So let names equals, and it's going to be an array, it's going to be Marge, Homer, Bart, Maggie, and Lisa. These are the characters from the TV show, The Simpsons. Now what I want to do is I want to take these items and return a new array where the names are properly capitalized, so not all lowercase like they are before. So the way you use map is you call map on your source array and you pass in a function that operates on each item in the original array and modifies it and returns it to make up the duplicated copy in or equivalent copy in the new array that is now the modified item. And that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense if I use words and wild gesturing to explain. So let me go ahead and try to write this out right now. So I'm gonna create a function called capitalize it up. Capitalize it up. And it's gonna take one argument, item. And the contents of the item are going to be, essentially each array item will be the argument that gets passed into it. So I'm gonna have that first letter equal item.car at zero dot to upper case. Now what I'm doing is I'm using some string manipulation methods to say take the first letter of the item and make it uppercase by using the to uppercase method. And I'm going to say let remaining letters equal item dot slice and I'm going to pass an argument of one. What the slice method does, I'm telling it to start from the second letter, in this case, the A-R-G-E, if I'm using Marge as an example, and return all the remaining letters from that to the endpoint. So the first letter, so the second letter to the very end, represented by item.slice1. And all I'm going to do now is return first letter plus remaining letters. Okay, so simple function, it just gets this item. And now all I need to do is create my new variable called let new names equals names dot map, call the map method, and call the callback function as a part of it, capitalize it up. And now if I were to print this out and let's see what happens, log new names. Let's go ahead and refresh this page and see what happens. And notice that when I run this code, you can now see Marge, Homer, Bart, Maggie, Lisa is properly capitalized exactly the way we would have wanted to do it. Now, we're wondering, what did we gain by doing this? Like, what exactly was using map here adding so much value that we just devote a part of this video to using when we could have just used the, a traditional approach in the for loop? Well, there is a, there's some niceness to this because it is nice to have a callback function that is very simple that we know is going to operate on each item individually as its own entity and not get it all you know, muddled up with having to carry state and all of those things. And also, we don't have to deal with loops again. You know, we looked at how we can move away from the traditional for loop and use for of and for each to simplify our life a bit. And the map method continues that fine tradition of reducing our need to both define a loop and also having to create a new array and start push, you know, add items to the array and so on. And there's also a slight performance increase as well because map is uh, a built-in native function just like both reduce and filter which we'll be seeing shortly there is some performance benefits of it being run on the lower layers of our browser and the javascript engine than us having to kind of recreate like both the looping and the pushing to a new array logic on our own 
So that's really the, the big advantage. And I'm not going to go do much more detail on this particular angle in subsequent videos, but just wanted to give you an idea of what to expect here in terms of why we're doing this as opposed to doing a more traditional for loop approach. Now, let's go back to our slides. And now, oh, I didn't get that. Okay, there it is. The next one is filter. And filter is great because one of the more common things you'll do with arrays, as I definitely do with arrays, is I start off with a collection of items, and then I want to turn those into a slightly smaller list of items. I want to remove things that don't make sense, or I want to essentially just, you know, whittle down into based on whatever condition there is. And so what filter does is it allows you to write some code that basically checks each item and says, is this item good to be in our final array, or is it not good, you know, thumbs down, and to basically be omitted from our final array. And with filter, it makes it very easy for us to be able to specify that kind of a Boolean logic, and then end up having a much nicer, more compact array based on whatever condition that we care about. And so let's go back to our code. So for filter, I'm going to no longer use names as our value. Let's go ahead and clear all of this out. And I'm going to instead have numbers. Let numbers equal, and it's going to be an array. And let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. I can go on forever, literally, because you know, there are numbers, but I want to stop right here. Uh, with filter, what I want to do is this. I want to use the filter method to come up with an array whose contents are only the even numbers from this list. And the way we call filters, just like we call map, we call it on our source array, call filter, and then pass in a callback function. Again, pretty straightforward. So in this case, I'm going to create a function called even only, and its argument again is going to be item. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to if return item the remainder of it equals zero. And that's what will be ultimately returned. And so in this case, a very simple modulo remainder mathematics here. And so let's go ahead and say let even numbers equals numbers dot filter and then plus in even only as the argument. And so let's go ahead and do console.log even numbers and see if this also resulted in exactly what we want. Let me refresh this page and look at that. When I refresh this page, you can see the output of this function having run is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. All the even numbers have been, I'm oh, sorry, all the odd numbers have been filtered out. Pretty neat. And, you know, with filter, you can, you know, you can have your logic be as complex or as simple as needed. You often use filter if you're going through an array of more complex objects and you want to only look for items who match certain criteria. For example, a zip code is within a certain range you're looking for, or someone's first name is a match. A lot of searching algorithms, especially searching approaches for largeness of content, use filter. And again, the reason why is filter is better than having to do things more by more traditional approaches with a for loop and then adding items to your array on your own. Performance is a, is a big reason. And you can argue with the compactness of this either. It's pretty, pretty convenient. And I know all you arrow function people out there are probably, you know, wondering why don't I just use an arrow function instead of actually defining my callback function separately. You're right. I can totally do that as well. But this also gets the job done. All right. Now we're almost done here. Last item is to look at reduce. Reduce is a, is a strange bird. It's not quite like either map or filter in that, you know, both map and filter, the output was an array. It could be an array of many items, could be an array of fewer items, but with reduce, the output is often a single value. Now, the single value could be an array, but it can be a number, it could be a string, it could be a boolean, it could be any host of things. And so this is one of those areas where you have an array, but the transformation is quite drastic in terms of like what you do, that what you'll end up will be a, a single value. Let's get back to our code editor and look at reduce in action. So I'm going to delete everything that we have right now. I'm going to leave numbers behind though, because what I'm going to use reduce for is to actually go through and sum up all the items in our array and return that value back to whatever we're calling it from. And so just like map and filter, reduce takes a callback function again. So I'm going to have another function. I'm going to call this one function add 
I'm just gonna go ahead and add. And it's gonna take two arguments this time though. With map and reduce, you by default only take you know one argument, which is the item of the, the array item you're iterating on. With reduce, you'll be taking two arguments. One of them will be called the, the accumulator, I'm gonna call it total, and then the next one will be item. So the first item is again gonna be uh, something unique for adding the, the sum of all the actions that we've done so far. And then item will be the, the item you're currently on. So that's pretty straightforward. And so for this, I'm going to do a very simple item, return total plus item. And that's essentially it. And when I run this on the total value, so like total numbers, total number equal numbers dot reduce, and let's call it add. Let's go ahead and see what this prints out to the screen. All right, if I do everything correctly, 78 gets printed to the screen. And the way it works is that the first time it runs, the value of total is zero and the item number is one. So return essentially adds the total of one. And the second time it runs, the value of total is the return value from the previous run of this particular function, or the previous time this function was called. And so one would be the starting value, then you add two to it, you add three to it, then it, you can see how it goes, where each time you add it, the previous value that it was when it was summed up is stored by the total parameter or argument, and then the current item gets added to it. And so that's how we get the, the value right here. Now with numbers, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just adding two things here, but it doesn't have to be that way. I can also change it to, let's say, letters. And let's say I want to essentially concatenate a string of just vowels. So A, E, I, O, and U. And in this case, I'm going to do function add again. And it's going to be total and item. And that's fine. I don't have to change anything here, right? And what I'm going to do instead is let vowels equals numbers dot reduce add again. In this case, it'd be letters. And if I were to print this to the screen, notice what you see here. You will now see A-E-I-O-U print to the screen instead. So that's an easy way of looking at how the, the reduce method can be used to go from many items to a particular calculation you are looking for. And now here's the thing, like, you know, here I am adding the value. I could be multiplying, I could be dividing, I could be doing any whole, any host of calculations to make this all work appropriately. Okay, I'm pretty sure you'll agree that map, filter, and reduce are pretty awesome. They're simple to use, but they're pretty powerful. We just pass in a callback function, and that callback function can do a whole lot of interesting things, but that doesn't matter. Map, filter, and reduce take care of the, the complicated parts for us, and all we really focus on are how we take our data from one form and turn it into another form. So that's pretty nice. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is in this video, we covered the most common, most popular parts of map, filter, and reduce, there's some quirks, some edge cases that I did not cover, but that I write about in both the book and in the article on the website for free. And so check out the description below and see the link to the article and you can check it out and make sure you brush up on those things that we didn't cover in the video, just in case you run into them as part of your everyday dealings with map, filter, and reduce. All right. If you have any questions, post in the forums at formatgroup.com. Sure, you can post on Twitter or in the comments in YouTube below, but I don't check them for it frequently, so the best way to get an answer that you can find, it also helps others because it can be indexed by search engines and all the other good stuff that comes along with it is to post in the forum, so go there. And if you like this video and like what you saw and the information presented, tell your friends and enemies all about it. The more view count that I have, the happier I feel. It's a direct correlation between number of views and how happy I am. Hit subscribe to be notified of cool new videos that I'm making that are relevant to arrays or other web development topics. And related to that, follow me at Group on Twitter and Facebook for more content about arrays and other web development topics and the occasional cat video. So follow me there for some more updates. And lastly, if you'd like to learn from something that's not a video, but more in a printed form, like our ancient forefathers did. Well, is ancient forefathers unnecessary to say? Well, doesn't matter. Buy a book. It's cool. There's a Kindle and paperback edition. Check it out. Arrays from Newton Ninja. You can find it on Amazon and other places where books are sold. Which, I don't know. Are there any? <laughs>